In this example, we have a cat data structure and we're asked to write a piece of code that computes the average length of the cat's legs. The first thing I do anytime I'm asked to write MIPS code involving a non-trivial data structure is I want to understand the data structure and the way that I do that is I draw a potential memory layout for it. So here I'm drawing a region of memory and on this side are my low addresses and this side are my high addresses. So I have a cat data structure. Presumably I'll have a pointer to that which in this case is called cat. And the first element of my data structure is a pointer to a character or an array of characters. And so that's going to be a four byte thing that is a char pointer. The next thing I have is a cat head T data structure. And you notice that there's no pointer here. And so in C what happens is we take this whole data structure and we jam it inside this one. So the cat head T data structure consists of an integer. This is size. This one was name. Followed by another integer which is the whisker count, and I'll just call that WC. So we just take this data structure and plop it right in the middle. Each of those is integers, and they're four bytes big. Next, we have um, an array of pointers to cat legs. So this array has four elements, and each of those elements is a pointer, and so four bytes big. So here are those four pointers, and so each of these are cat leg stars. I'll say CL star. And so this is leg zero, leg one, leg two, and leg three. So we can see from the beginning of this data structure, this is at a zero offset, a four offset, eight, and 24 byte offsets. And then since these are pointers, if I wanted to access the name, I would need to load the name pointer and that would give me the index of a character array, presumably, which stores the name. And similarly, each of the legs is a pointer to a leg data structure, which consists of an integer weight and an integer length for that particular leg. And, you know, we could actually have two leg pointers that point to the same leg. The, the pointer could be zero or null, and so that leg may not exist. Or that pointer could point to a different leg. So, we're ready to translate the code. And we expect our arguments to be passed in a zero. I'm going to assign total leg length to register T0, the number of legs to register T1, I in register T2, and obviously the return value is returned through V0. So let's go ahead and write this piece of code. So the first step of this code is to initialize the values of t0, t1, and t2 all to 0 for the first three variables in our function. To implement the i is less than 4 condition for our loop, we're going to compare register t2 to the value 4 using a BGE. And when that BGE is true, we want it to exit the loop and go to the average leg length loop done label. Now we're ready to write the code that interacts with the data structure. So when we want to load cat pointer at legs index i, we're starting from this cat pointer, which is in a0, and we're looking to add a 12 offset from that, and then for each i we need to multiply i by 4. So we first add 12 to the data structure's base pointer to give us the offset into the structure, which is the first element of the legs array. 
Since we want the ith element of the legs array, we're going to take the value i and multiply it by 4, because each pointer in the array is 4 bytes big. By adding these two values, t3 and t4 together, we can get the address of the ith element of the legs array. And if we load from this address with a zero offset, we get the actual value, which is the pointer to that leg. We then need to check to see if that pointer is null, which we do with a BEQ instruction. If the pointer is not null, then we need to dereference the leg pointer to get the length element from the resulting data structure. We can do that with a single load operation using a four offset from the leg base pointer since the length is the second element in the leg data structure. We can then add the loaded value to our current total leg length variable and increment num legs. We then finish off our loop by incrementing i and jumping back to the top of the loop to see if we need to do another iteration. The rest of the code in this function is pretty straightforward without any data structure manipulations.